All right, how's it going, everyone? Welcome back. I'm excited to continue working on this power supply some more, uh, learning more about high to low voltage and AC-DC electronics. So we are almost done with the op amps that we were working with that we're using as the actual uh, supplies. There's one more capacitor that we have to get. I think last time, it's I know it's only been a few days, but I've completely forgotten because I've worked on so many projects over the weekend everything that we were working on now. Hmm, excuse me. But I think we just need to get one more capacitor for each of the op amps, and then we should be good to go to start working on the rest of the circuit. So that'll be fuses, switches, relays, and then I think we'll also need a relay for the um, uh, input. And yeah, I think that'll be just about everything we need. And then we can start doing the digital stuff, the actual controller, uh, the micro, and um, all the different lines to control and all the different ADC lines. So yeah, it should be pretty cool. Uh, so let's get started. So if you uh, want to chat or whatever, I'm happy to talk about anything I'm working on or answer questions or take feedback if you have a better idea how to do something. And as usual, there's a uh, always these uh, dogecoin bounties going on so if you want to make a little money too it'd be worth your time to invest obviously just a little bit but who knows it could these bounties could grow as the channel grows all right let me turn the music back on let me know if it's too loud or not loud enough or whatever uh, all right so I pulled up just before this started, a list of uh, capacitors that I think will work. We need a 220 microfarad, so we basically need a can cap. We can't just use a little ceramic cap for that. Um, looks like I'm having some trouble loading the images here. Oh, that one's just messed up. So last time I was having issues because I couldn't find one that was already made in Circuit Maker. Uh, that's pretty easy to fix. Obviously, we make one, but. I kind of just ran out of time last time. I'm gonna check out a couple, see if any of these uh, really small ones, or not small, these really cheap ones right here have parts made. If not, then I'll make one. But I don't wanna go too far down the list because they start getting kind of expensive. And, sorry. We don't, uh, there's already some pretty expensive parts on this board, so we don't wanna do anything that's gonna like make that number go through the roof. I think at the beginning of this project too, I toyed around with the idea of using a different micro than the um, uh, a different micro than the Teensy, because I've used that so much, just because it's easy to use and everything. But I wanted to use something that I could actually like debug with, uh, rather than having to deal with the Arduino IDE. But unfortunately, there are some other considerations that I have to go into if you're just putting a micro down on the board. Instead of one of those carrier board, one of those like pre-made PCBs, uh, there's you just have to account for all the stuff that the micro needs, all the capacitors and you know the crystals and the programming interface. That's usually kind of tricky, and the Teensy is just so easy to just plug into a computer and program. So, all right, yeah, it looks like nothing exists here. So we are just going to go ahead and pick one. I think I'm going to use something from Worth Electronic. I've never used anything from Surge before. I'm not so familiar with this company. Uh, probably fine, but I've just never messed with any of their stuff. So I'll probably end up picking this one right here because I have used Worth stuff before and I've never had an issue. But that being said, most parts that you buy that are simple components like this, I you almost never have any major issues. Mechanical, the only things I've ever had issues with are mechanical components, like switches and things like that. 
All right, so we are going to make this one. Create new component. All right. And we will just use, let's make a new symbol. And then we need to make one side the plus and one side the minus. The positive and negative, sorry. <laughs> and then we'll probably add some text in here to show where that is. There we go. <laughs> Just quick and easy. All right, and then I'll pull up the data sheet for this part, which probably won't, I don't know if it'll, oh, it does give us a pin out. Okay, here we go. This right here is what we care about. So A and B are the sizes, and where are those? Down here, 3.5 millimeters apart, and the holes need to be 0.8 millimeters wide. Easy enough. All right, we'll do a new footprint. I thought I clicked it, it may have crashed. Hold on. There it goes. All right, let's drop a pad in here. And then this will be the positive. Multi-layer, uh, hole size. Oh shoot, hold on. We need to change this to metric. And let's do 0.5, okay. All right, so they're 3.5 apart. So that means, how far, the negative? what's half of that? 1.75? Yeah, negative 1.75. And then we said 0.8 here, and probably like 1.6 here. Just give it enough to metal to connect to, okay? This will be positive 1.75. And this will be N. All right, and then the size of this thing, we need to know the diameter. Oh, excuse me. Diameter is eight. Plus or minus 0.5, so let's just go 8.5. So I need a circle. And this needs to go on the overlay. So this will just be the drawing on the board showing uh, where exactly our, um, where this part is going to extend out to. All 
we said 8.5. Well, half of that, 4.25 because it's a radius. There we go. And then finally, I need to change over to this layer. <coughs> well, excuse me. Something caught in my throat. All right. So there's the positive, and I think we're good to go there. I think most of these actually mark the negative on the board, but that's all right. This will be okay. Anyone who looks at this will know what it's talking about. Oh, I need to add a... A model for it. Uh, I wonder if I can just find one. I remember this one as being a weird model. It's hard to make circular models of this thing. I'll make it if I have to, but I really don't want to. All right, let's see if we can find, sure. Uh, let's see if we can find this particular part and get some CAD for it. Here we go. Hey, we might have been able to. Look at that. All right. So now let's just add a quick little 3D body. And we'll do generic and okay. Yep, there it is, more or less. How are we looking? Oh wow, we're inside it. <laughs> oh wow, did that actually like line up? <laughs> Wow, that's the first like part that's just like I didn't have to adjust it. It was just like lined up in the right spot. Shout out to this Oh no. There we go. Hold on. I've lost it. Where is it? There it is. I've zoomed way out. This shout out to this company for like actually uh, making their um, uh, model like how you would on it, like line up with how you would create it on a PCB. So that's cool. Wait, it may not be actually. Hold on. Oh, I might have spoken too soon. See how this? See where this ink line is? It's lined up with the bottom of this via. It might be either the, oh, this is on bottom. Okay, so this is on the wrong layer. Good to catch. Okay, so that is correct. It looks like it's probably a little too far down, but that's okay. Awesome. All right, so let's save this to the server. And then hopefully with this, we can uh, um, 
finish out these op amps. Hopefully this doesn't hurt my stream too bad too. <laughs> well, if anyone gets a chance to let me know how your Tuesday's going. So this larger cap will uh, help keep low frequency noise from interfering, and then the other cap, like this one right here, is much smaller, and that'll work on high frequency noise. All right, we need to rotate this 90, other way 270. That got a little weird. All right, let's try that again. Connect all these up. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, I think this means that all of our uh, op amps are good to go. At least in this very simple version that we're running. <laughs> or very simple, I guess, uh, um, application. All right, so our next thing that we have to do, Let's see, let me pull up our diagram here. All right, so here's where we just finished these. We've done this, 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 and that. So now we're getting into all of this um, uh, digital stuff. So we need to get some fuses, uh, some relays, and some mechanical switches. So I want relays to be able to electronically turn the, uh, the supply on. And I want mechanical switches so that there's also a mechanical way to turn it on and off. So let's get started. So I guess the next thing would be fuses. Um, I would like to do fuse holders and then put fuses in them. But I don't know how expensive that's going to be. So let's find out. <laughs> Something like this would probably be pretty cheap. Well, no, it's not. It's like eight bucks. Man. All right. Um, in stock, active. Probably a through hole mount. Yeah, something like this. Or you can just pop it in. Oh, wow, you can literally just get the clips and, like, put them on the circuit board. We may not go that far. We may, uh, well, how cheap is that? Ten cents each. There's an argument to be made for this. <laughs> What's the current rating? There isn't one, but it's probably pretty good. 
It's for five millimeter diameter fuses. So we'd have to pick the fuse to know how far apart we want them to be. What's the cheapest option that already has the entire thing put together? Let's see here. We need a lot more per page. Probably this one right here, 60 cents. Five by 20. We save a lot of money by just buying the clips, but we also like make this easier and like more robust if we do this. Well, let's see. Uh, I tell you what. Let's see if any of these are uh, exist in Circuit Maker already. All right, let's see. We need another schematic with like DC control. Or that's what we'll have to call it. Something like that. Okay. Let's see here. Oh wow, this doesn't even exist. <laughs> this might get a little harder if this is a thing. Oh no, it should probably. I'm on favorites, sorry. It does exist. I'm just gonna go with this then. It's a little pricier, but it already exists, 250 volt, 6.3 amp. Obviously, we're not going to go anywhere close to that, so I think we're fine. All right, four of these. One, two, three, four. All right, and we'll have to... Somebody needs to remind me when we order these parts for this thing to pick out, actually order the fuses for it as well. Otherwise, I'm going to get everything and be really disappointed. All right, what was next on our list of items? Uh, four relays, solid state relays. There's no particular reason to use these over like power MOSFETs or anything like that. It's just that I've never used them before and want to learn how to work with them. So. So we're going to try and use them. All right, active. All right, what are our through hole options here? The only downside is this might be kind of pricey, depending on what we get. Yeah. Man, saving up money for this particular thing is going to be kind of tough. <laughs> All right, so we, let's see, let's look at pricing. So the cheapest one's like a dollar. That's not horrible. 
load, load currents, 250 milliamps. I need more than that though, right? What is load current? Is that, that's the max current? So if we change to one amp, we're looking at two bucks at least. I wonder if we could get one of these in like multi-channel. Is that an option? Doesn't look like it. I don't want to have to spend 20 bucks just to get four of them. But... Let's see what we're looking at here. Voltage, forward voltage. What about like mechanical relays? Here, actually, let's let's get a new. I just want to see. I've just never used. I've actually never used relays in general. I always just use MOSFETs. So I'm just curious, like what the cheapest is. I'm guessing because these are mechanical, they're like a lot more expensive. Dollar 28, but you have to get a ton of them. So yeah, these are pretty pricey. All right, so probably not for us. Uh, all right, then let's look for power MOSFETs then. I would use an array, but something like this, it could get really hot if it has four different channels going through it. Oh, I gotta look up this whole, I forget this whole N channel, P channel thing. I think we want N channel. No, P channel. I feel like I wrote this down somewhere because I was having such a hard time with it. like remembering just what was required or like how it worked. All right, give me just a second. I'll see if I can find. I was looking at something a while back. It was during the lightsaber project.
Here we go. Let me pull up just a sec. All right, so this right here is what I'm looking for. Gauge source less than zero, gauge source equals zero, gauge source greater than zero. All right, we need a good diagram of this as well, because <laughs> I'm still missing something here. All right, so this is going to be on the high voltage side. Oh man, with super, with, this is going to have really high voltage. This may be harder than I thought. The relay thing may actually make sense here. As expensive as it is. Yeah, because if we turn it on, we need to pull it up to... So we're going to have to have a network, basically, if that's to turn this on and off. I think that was originally why I decided I wanted to try the solid-state relays. Okay. All right, thank you all for your time. I'm going to have to read through this some and uh, try and figure this out. This is designed for AC. It should have no problem with DC. Um, interesting. So what are T1 and T2? Six and eight. Oh, okay, that's the output, T1, T2. And then input is the anode cathode, I think. Right, so capacitor between the anode and cathode, that makes sense. All right, I don't know if this is like necessarily the one we want, but most some of these get pretty expensive, so I don't know that we can go too far off of this list. Something like this looks really cool though. <laughs> Four amp, zero to 30 volts. Okay, so this is more of a DC thing. Yeah, I'm going to want the English data sheet, please. So it's trigger LED, three milliamps max. Oh, that's kind of cool. It'll turn an LED on. That could be really useful, actually.
I don't know which side is the high and which will be the low. <laughs> but I like the LED thing. So off state output terminal voltage give it to 30 volts. On state current, on state current derating. Current pulsed, and nine amps, geez. Output power dissipation. Supply voltage, 24 volts max. Oh, well. <laughs> I got to figure out what voltage is required to... All right, so now I'm starting to realize that I really do have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> also, the 24 volts recommended max is a little concerning. Like we're gonna need something higher than that because we're having up to 26 volts come in, so. That may not work. Well, unless that's this the signal line. Yeah, I really have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. So if anyone has any uh, suggestions. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to have to read through this article and figure this out. Okay, I think I'm starting to understand this a little more.
Okay, so in order for this to work, let's use this one. A voltage greater than the, uh, what is the rating for it? The on-state voltage must be applied. So if I'm looking at this one, input forward current is 30 milliamps, durating, pulsed, put reverse voltage. You know, one of these might work for our uh, the other side of this thing, too. And I... Hmm. 30 milliamps is a lot. Because of those current requirements, I might have to use... Um, a, an actual, like, use a MOSFET. Uh, to turn the relay on and off. So, it's unfortunate, but doable. Let's see. Well, trigger LED current is three milliamps. Ohms. Yeah. They do include a resistor for it, though. Same here. A resistor is included in that LED to keep it from going crazy. Uh, so we might have to do that. A resistor on the high end and then a MOS NFET on the low side. We gotta find something that can hold up to the voltage that we need. One point two volts and two amps. I like the four amp one just because um, we could use it for other stuff, but. Let's look at this one. Not counting it out yet. <laughs> Does it have more pins than I'm seeing here? Because <laughs> that's a little weird. Amps max. On state voltage, 60 volts. Two and a half amps. Supply voltage, 48 volts. This is all, this is actually seems like the right one for us. 
forward current 20 milliamps on state current 2.5 amps operating temperature pretty reasonable And yeah, I think we will have to do that MOS for the NFET thing. All right, I think this is our part. It's bi-directional. So this is probably designed for um, like, uh, oh, what is it? AC as well as DC. Did it give a pin out or a footprint? Because that would be ideal. No. One, two, six, four. So it does have like five pins. Weird. Let's see if there's any chance that this part already exists in Circuit Maker. I don't think so, though. This is kind of obscure. Yeah. It does not. But two and a half amps, we can use this to, we can put this on the, um, on the input side as well so that we can uh, turn the power on and off to the regulators. All right. So let me just look at this a little more. I gotta figure out exactly what we need to do. Also, I don't think this has an internal resistor, so I think we have to do that ourselves. It looks like that's what they're doing here. Okay. Those are the ones connected together, so I'll have power come in one, go out the other. They give us a uh, diagram here with measurements, but they don't give us like a recommended footprint, which is really interesting. I wonder if that number means something. Toshiba Trying to find if there was something like on like on their website maybe. G 
Just trying to search for something specific. Here we go. It did find it. Same thing, the data sheet, package information. There we go. That's what I'm curious about. Tube dimensions. Through all surface mount. Interesting. So it looks like we're just gonna have to do the math and try and come up with something here. Okay. And then we'll need a resistor and an NFET to control it and then four of these. This is getting really complicated. <laughs> All right, um, let's make the part. And then I'm not going to do anything crazy with a symbol, just a basic thing. All right, and then. Yeah, one, two, and three, and then six and four. Or four and six, okay. So I need to flip these around. All right. Pin one, two, three, four, and six. And then one and two are the diode that control, four and six the output, three is not connected. All right, good to go. Whoops. Save that. Flip back here and then make a new footprint. And then what are these measurements in? Are they in millimeters? They are. So go metric, half millimeter. All right, and then the pin sizes are, looks like 0.5 millimeters, plus or minus 0.1. So we'll go for 0 0.7, 0 0.762. That's actually probably a really good size for it already. 
And then just because these will have some current coming through them, we'll make these a little bigger. Like 1.8. All right, and then what do we need next? We need spacing. 2.54 millimeters, so a tenth of an inch. Yep, 2.54, and then what is it, how far apart? 7.85 to 8.80. Okay. <laughs> so what's a good number between that? 8.2? That sounds good to me. So negative 4.1. Negative 2.54, and then negative 4.1, and 0. All right, there it is. And then we could probably draw out something to show where it's going to be at. We don't really need a pin 1 marker because the holes will kind of show how it goes in. All right, so it's going to be a max of 7.37 long. Let's go on the top overlay here. So we'll just put some lines down, top and bottom. Get these in place, and then I'll put a uh, pin one side marking. So we said 7.37 high or long, so half of that. Let me get a calculator. Point three seven divided by two, three point six eight five, so three point six nine. So. 3.69. Wow, that's really close to that, actually. <laughs> and I think we said the width was, yeah, like 6.4, but this is fine. That's actually a little close to that, so I'm actually going to bump it up some. I'm just going to put it at 4. We don't want stuff too close to it anyway because of heat. So, all right, and then I'm going to drop one right here. Even though I said we don't need a pin one marking, that's going to be our pin one marking. All right, one, two, three. Four, six. Nope, not five, six. And then for the model, probably just put a box where it's already at. Extruded, and what's our height going to be? Looks like about four millimeters high, actually. It's almost a perfect, well, no, hold on. 
That's going to sit up a little bit too. All right, it's going to be offset by 1.05. And then it's going to be 3.7, 3.9 3 tall. All right, if I go to 3D view, oops. There it is. Okay, that's good to go. All right, this will probably throw an error because the pins aren't sequential. Yep, that's all right. We don't want pin five. Ugh. Man, I'm getting tired. <laughs> okay, now we can place these. One, two, three, four. So the reason that these don't need to be connected to like ground or anything is they're, they work by opto electronics uh which is awesome so they there's a little led inside that turns on that activates the circuit on the other side connects the two lines together uh which means that you don't need a ground or a vcc reference you just have to supply a voltage difference across these two pins to run that led Okay, so these will be, actually, are really something? Uh, I can't, what's the, I need to figure out what the, uh, name abbreviations need to be. Okay, here we go. Typically we say U, but on these particular ones we may say FET. Oh no, these are relays, sorry. RY. So the designator needs to be RY1, RY2, RY3, and RY4. And then I realized too that the fuses are also not correct. So what's fuse? It's just F. F1, F2, F3, F4. Okay. And we might need to move these over here to the other side. Because they'll need to go in this side and out that side, basically. There we go. Okay. All right, so we got fuse, we got relay, and then we'll need a mechanical switch, and then we'll need a way to control the relay. <coughs> so in this case, I'm thinking slide switches, obviously. Uh, 
All right, so this is going to be a little trickier as to not get too expensive. But wow, a lot of them are actually pretty expensive. <laughs> oh, I don't care about that. I care about price. And then we went through a hole. I think any of these are fine. Not crazy about right angle stuff, but I'll consider it. I kind of want something like this with a lot of pins on it. Uh, just because I want to connect an LED to some of them as well. So, wow, this is excessive. <laughs> so we want basically two single pole double throw switches. And I don't know what the correct thing for that is. But anything that's got two rows of pin is, is probably close. That's probably what we want, but in right angle form. Double pull, double throw. Okay, is that what we want? Ah, yes, looking good, okay. Uh, I just realized, too, that a lot of these aren't going to have the current requirements that we need. <laughs> Alright, hold on. We need 28 volts or higher. Oh, that was for AC. I need for DC. Well, same thing. 28 is higher at that point. Um, well, hold on. Let's go back. Let's just do DC rating, because that's all we care about, really. And then for the current, we need quite a bit. Current rating. We're in 500 milliamps, one amp. Yeah, probably better than one amp, right? Because 500 milliamps DC is not going to cut it. Oh, now they suddenly get so expensive. Dang it. Yeah, these are like heavy duty things. So weird that, I mean, I would think something like this would be able to handle an amp going through it, but maybe not. It's only 300 milliamp. Well, the one amp isn't too expensive. We can probably be okay with that because the fuse will blow out if we go over that. And hey, if we burn out the switch, then we learn something, I guess. So 
was hoping to use some C and K or E switch stuff, but. That is not going to be an option with how expensive they are. Though this would definitely work well. I don't know that this would work, but this would definitely work. But yeah, it's designed for AC voltage. Huh, on the side of the switch, it still says 0.5 amps for 125 volt DC. That's odd. If you notice the markings in this, these pictures. So how is that? All right, let's look at something like this. It's 300 milliamps. for electrical characteristics, but I don't know if I see any of that. Contact rating 0.3 amps at 30 volts DC. So for lower voltage, can we go higher? <laughs> I don't know exactly how this stuff works. Let's search power switches. Let's see what comes up. Not toggle. What about rocker switches? What are those? These. Uh, these will definitely be able to handle a lot more power, but I don't know how I feel about that. Using one of those on the board. All right, and these are circuits to control. Yeah. Push button switches. Maybe we get a mechanical push button that just like alternates. Let's see, in stock, active. And then I want through hole, hole right angle. Oh wow, there's not a lot of those, is there? <laughs> Those are kind of cool though. But yeah, not really what we want. All right, 
off on. How expensive are toggle switches? Probably a bit pricey, but I guarantee they can handle a lot more current. Let's see what we got here for low prices, please. A dollar sixty. Yeah, we're very quick up to the point where we might as well just pay for those expensive ones anyway. But oh, but they weren't very good though. I honestly didn't think switches were going to be that hard of a thing to do. So this is like... <laughs> it's just amazing to me. That they just can't handle that much power. All right, so toggles probably aren't the right option. Push button, we decided, well, there's a lot more than there now. Oh, this might be including like tax switches too. Well, let's see what they got. <laughs> 175,000 options, but in stock and active, there's only 5,000. All right, what's our lowest price option? 54 cents. These are for things that need, or does not have a button clip onto the top of them? That could be useful. All right, let's go to through hole. Something like this could work, but I need like Double pull, single throw, probably. What does that give me? I 
All right, then we're back to our current ratings again. Yeah, anytime we get into this one amp rated stuff, it starts to get really expensive really quick. Well, alternatively, we could use the basic switch and put it on the control line to the solid state relay. And then effectively we're turning that relay off anytime we hit the switch. I really, re man, I wish we could do a mechanical off though without having to break the bank, but. Don't know that that's possible. I just searched switches in general. I'm surprised there's not more tactile. There probably is more than that, right? Rotary switches. That'd be kind of fun. Alright, in the tax switches, let's just see what the options are. I don't think there's anything that's going to be high power. This is typically pretty small stuff. see is there a current rating this is the only one that fits our requirements probably well it's not that expensive but it's also not the right kind. It's the momentary off or momentary on. All right, so that doesn't work. <laughs> Darn it, I didn't think this was gonna be this hard, but I think it is. <laughs> So we're just going to have to do something where we control the solid state relay with the switch. Basically it's its own its own mechanical off. Which is doable. It's just not quite the it's not a fully mechanical solution, right? Like if the the relay has an issue in shorts or something like that, it'll still drive current. But all right, we tried. That's weird that there's not something that can do that better. Oh, maybe I don't pick a certain type. Maybe I just uh, look at these current ratings again. Maybe there's just more options if I don't pick a style or anything. Three amps DC specifically, that's interesting. All 
All right, quite a lot of options here. Probably all expensive. Oh yeah, these are things using like wires and stuff instead of like through hole, but I bet I can make it a through hole component like this one, right? Dollar fourteen, six amps AC, but what's the DC power? Oh, separate shipping fee. I don't like that. I don't want a marketplace product. But this this particular one is the double pull double throw right yep one amp why did this show up before Which one is this? This is the MFS 201N-9. That's 201N-9 right here. DC 30 volts, one amp. Okay. This one could work actually. And then just to make sure it's doing the thing we want it to. Yep. Five flips between four and six, and two flips between one and three. Are these connected together? Oh, because that would be a problem. Two to one, five to four. Two to, okay, I don't think they're connected together. Cool. So we could use, so what we'll do is use one of the pins to drive an LED and the other set to drive the actual uh, output. I wonder if that rating is for like the whole thing. Like if you connect it all, like current passing through both sides at the same time. If so, this could be tricky. <laughs> all right. Let me see if this option is available. Nope. Wouldn't want it to be too easy. Well, it's not that hard of a footprint to make.
seeing it, but now I'm thinking like, oh, is that double pull, double throw? Like, if that current is counting both sides, then we need to use both sides to pass through. Yeah, as much as I'm annoyed to do it, I think we just do the one to control the um, uh, the solid state relay. Because with what I was planning on doing here and everything, like I need something cheap and whatnot. So pretty much anything will be able to handle that amount of current. Well, except for one milli. <laughs> Actually, it probably needs to be 50 milliamps or better. And the voltage is going to be fairly low, too. So we'll try and pick something that just already... Let's do the double pull, double throw. Right? Yeah. And then I guess just pick the cheapest option that already has a footprint made because 300 milliamps, six volts. Yeah, they're all gonna be able to handle that. So I'm not gonna do anything right angle if I can avoid it. All right, let's see here. Start with the cheap one. Okay, this one exists. We need four of these, probably on the end. Oh, yeah, over here on the input side. One, two, three, four. And then we'll move these over. All right, so one of these will control an LED and the other one will be control the uh, uh, um, or go into the, uh, I can't think of it, solid, yeah, the relay on off. Okay. And then we still need MOSFETs for that too. You know, honestly, I'm probably gonna put the fuses on the output side right before the uh, uh, output. Probably almost done for tonight. All right, so this input needs to be not that from our amplifiers, channel four op out. So channel one op out, channel two op out, channel three op out, channel four op out. Okay.
Oops. All right, there we go. One, two, three, four. All right. Why is it still showing? Oh, because it's not connected to anything else. Oh, yeah, we're going to do like terminal blocks and stuff. I'm going to put a bunch of like uh, terminal blocks and then pins and stuff. Um, I don't know that we'll actually like a lot. Of, I may not populate all of it or use all of it or whatever. All right. And then from here, how do we connect this? I'm going to turn the name off on all these. probably have this switch power on like connect both sides of this to VCC and then one of these will go straight to that so I'm going to move them back here though okay and then have we used VCC yet Ground. No, we haven't. Okay, so I'm going to use the VCC. Actually, I'm going to use plus five. Well, no. No, I'm going to use VCC for this particular thing because uh, it needs to be three volts, but um, I'll use plus five for five volt stuff if there is any. As many LEDs as we're driving, this could get to be a bit of a problem. I'm wondering if I shouldn't drive the LEDs off 5 volts. Yeah, that would probably make the most sense, honestly. Just because, so the TNC has a 3.3 volt regulator, but I think it can only supply up to like 250 milliamps, uh, which is not a lot. So we need to do something to, um, that won't, the way we connect this to power needs to be such a way that uh, we can still run this stuff. Since we're using a MOS of it, an NFET to run this, the 5 volt will be fine. And that can supply more current because it's coming directly from the USB. So we'll say 5 volts. And then everything on this side gets connected to that.
All right, and then I need an infant. Is the BSS 138 an infant? That's a pretty common thing. I got, I got some parts for my other project. I think I used one of those. Look real quick. Yep, end channel, 50 volt, 200 milliamp. That will more than do it. All right, so I already know of a part that exists too. So great, I could just use that. Because I can just use this one. PSS 138 W-7-F. Dash, or sorry, W-7 dash chef. Here we go. This is Diodes Incorporated, yep. All right, so I need four of these. Wow, the symbol is huge. <laughs> Two, three, four, all right. And then we need ground on each of these. And then this gate is our microcontrol line. to the negative side and then we just need resistors on the positive side and we'll be good to go all right and then for the resistor we need okay I need to look at this part again what does it take to drive it The LED forward current rating is 30 milliamps. We should probably do less than that. <laughs> so typically 10 to 20 milliamps. And what's its voltage drop? I think we said it was 1.64. At least that's what I remember. One point three three typical. And we want to keep it so let's say fifteen milliamps. Uh so so five minus one point three three. Point three three is three point six seven volts, fifteen milliamps. So V equals IR, so divide by zero point zero one five. And we need to get a resistor that is two hundred and forty four ohms or thereabouts. All right, let's see here. Stock, active. So 
So as close to 244 as we can get reasonably. A little higher or lower in either direction is fine. 243 has 60 parts. Wow. 240 is a really common value, though. Yeah, 240 is the most common value, so we're going to use that one. And we're going to use the 0805 package. And now we just need to find one that already exists. Preferably the, I would normally go with these Panasonic ones, but 31 in stock is kind of concerning. Is there other Panasonic ones that are in stock? Oh yeah, here you go. 147,000. All right, let's see if this part exists. It does, good. All right. Generic resistor is what we're calling this. <laughs> Actually, I should probably place it out here. Uh, the answer to that question is not very much uh, because the LED doesn't use a whole lot of power. So these resistors are not going to be dealing with a lot of dissipation. If you want the number to that, uh, power is... Uh, volts times amps or resistance times current squared so it would be 240 times 0 0.015 times 0 0.015 which gives us 0 0.05 watts and this particular one Generic resistor, power rating 0.125 watts. So yeah, it's fine. But good question, and that was a solid catch. Not many people ask that kind of question. At the times that you don't ask that question, something will explode. <laughs> or catch on fire, so that was a good thing to ask. All right, uh, I'm gonna turn the name off on all of these. Or the comment, I guess. Okay. We're doing good, now we just need our control line. All right. Um One control, two control, three control, channel four control. And then I'm going to turn off the comments for these diodes as well. All right, so that's our fuses, relays, and mechanical switch. So now we need our output points, and then we need our controller with everything and our status LEDs and all that. 
Um, yeah. Voltage controller. Oh, we haven't done this yet. I forgot about this one. <laughs> yeah, that needs to happen at some point. We have to control the voltage going into the amp channel 3V control. Yep. That's got to be controlled. And the enabled lines as well. Man, we're going to be able to fire this up in stages. This is awesome. All right. I haven't, other things I haven't thought about are displays. Uh, we said we wanted a USB port, but that's not going to be necessary if we use the Teensy. So we'll just need our micro and our um, our potentiometer, our SPI controlled potentiometers. The displays, we could probably get away with some seven segment type displays or maybe a screen, I don't know. We'll have to see, that's kind of a weird one. We may just have to not include this or just include attachment points for it but not actually have it on there. All right. Well, looks good. Uh, got a lot done and still a bunch more to do. So thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm pretty tired and I'm getting hungry, so I'm going to call it a night. And I will see you all on Thursday.